After Sauron was defeated and the forces of good finally triumphed, some heroes who played a key role in this decided to leave Middle-earth and go to the west. Thus, Frodo and his uncle Bilbo sailed to the west. Gandalf also sailed there, along with the elven lords Elrond and Galadriel. After Aragorn's death, his friends Legolas and Gimli also went there. What awaited them all there? In the movies, almost nothing is said about what exactly is beyond the sea. Yes, and in the original book trilogy, the Lord of the Rings about it is also not very detailed. But from Tolkien's other works we know that in the west is Amon, another continent, which is comparable in size to Middle-earth. What is in Amon and who lives there? This is what we will talk about. Amon is the western continent of Arda. At the dawn of the ages, the Vala, the analog of the local deities, moved here after the island of Almoran, their original dwelling place, was destroyed by Melkor in Middle-earth. After moving to Amon, the Vala began to settle there and founded their kingdom, Valinor. Though I would not call it a full-fledged state, rather it was just a place where the Vala lived and changed at will. When the elves awakened in the east, in Middle-earth, a war began between the Vala and Melkor, who wanted to subjugate or destroy these beautiful creatures. As a result of the war, many elves agreed to move to Amon, where they would not be threatened. Here the elves founded their own kingdom bordering Valinor, which was named Eldamar. There they lived for many hundreds and thousands of years in peace, tranquility, and prosperity. Fearing that Melkor would again destroy their home, the Vala fortified the approaches to Amon and closed the continent with a magical veil so that no one could get there without their permission. Only the great navigator Erendil, who sailed to ask the Vala for help in the war against Melkor, who had almost defeated the remaining humans and elves in Middle-earth. The Vala agreed and sent a huge army to war, the result of which was the fall of Melkor. For their help in this war, they awarded their own island to a tribe of humans, which later became the Numenorians. The Numenorians gained unprecedented power and decided to challenge the Vala themselves. The chief god of Eru, Iliavator, caused the ocean waves to crash down on the Numenorian fleet and sink it. And after that he hid Amon from the real world, so that it became possible to get there only if you are an elf, or if the Vala themselves allowed you to do so. And this rule was in effect for all the remaining eras. Occasionally messengers to Middle-earth came from Amon, for example, Gandalf and other wizards, but no one but elves could get there themselves. What is located in Amon? As I said, there are two kingdoms located in Amon. The first is Valinor, where the Vala and the weaker immortal spirits, the Mayor, live. The capital of Valinor is the city of Valimar, with its beautiful golden roofs. On the eastern coast of the continent spreads the land of the elves, Eldamar. Its capital was the city of Tyrion, which was rumored to be so beautiful that one of the greatest elven cities in Middle-earth, Gondolin, was built on its model. Eldamar also owned a city on the coast, Alqualond. It was here that the first killing of an elf by a kin took place, when the Noldor elves led by Theonor attacked their brethren to take away their ships. Aside from these two kingdoms, Amon doesn't have a particularly diverse geography. To the north are the cold wastelands of Araman, to the south is the hot desert of Avatar. And that's pretty much it. Why were all the heroes so eager to go there? Because Araman gives them all peace. For Gandalf, it was his native land. For the elves, it was the immortal lands, free from war and evil, where they were not in danger of fading. Besides, the elves realized that the age of men had come to Middle-earth, and they had nothing more to do there. Frodo and Bilbo, and later Sam, went there because they could. Imagine being allowed to go practically to paradise at the end of your life, wouldn't you agree? And they were given that honor, as all three were guardians of the ring. Legolas went to Amon because he was an elf, but Gimli. I don't have a definite answer here, but I think he didn't want to be separated from his faithful friend and decided not to miss the opportunity to be the only dwarf who had been there. What do you think about it? Subscribe and write comments.